court, I mean, to the police station on Friday evening. There were three peace people arrested and charged, almost charged almost immediately with gun charges and ammunition charges. And it's a really interesting story because GSU went to their home, searched the home, found nothing. And while they're searching the home, there are other GSU officers in the yard. And after searching for like three hours, then they say, let's go in the yard. And suddenly when they walked in the yard, by where the fence is broken, on top of the, um, the little house for the dog, the dog house, there they just find a gun. And of course, the mother and the two sons were taken in. I mean, these are working Belizeans. The minor, of course, was not, the minors in the home were not taken in. But what's sad about it is that they, the gun law that they're trying to amend or change, even if it's changed, would not address that situation. Because here's this woman who has nothing to do with the law, has never been a follower of the law. Her sons have no record. And they had to spend the entire weekend in lockup. And even that, they were arraigned this morning, and they have to now spend at least two weeks at Hattieville before bail can be okay. granted. Because the amendment says that you have to wait until 10 days notice, 10 working days notice to the DPP. So if they really want to change the gun law, they really have to even consider the time period. I mean, it's unfair. You're still innocent until proven guilty. The other issue is really devastating to me as a woman. And now I realize what other women go through when they're locked up there. My client, she is on her monthly. From Friday, she's held there and she's denied the right to bed every day. They only made her take a bath this morning, and I pleaded for her. I pleaded for her, and they told me that that's the rule. It's just before you're brought to court, then you can take a bath. So we had to take wipes for her to be wiping up herself. The other thing is she's denied the use of the bathroom when she needs it. And the explanation is that if there's not a female present and immediately available to escort her to the restroom, she can't use the restroom. And the truth is there are more male officers than female officers. And so we ended up having to deal with my client. She ended up with an infection because when I was called in, my client was a already getting very ill. She was throwing up, foaming at the mouth, her nose was bleeding, and she was just a nervous wreck. So I had to plead with the police officer on duty, and he says, well, I really want to help you, but there are no females to escort her to the hospital. And I'm like, can we get a female from any other place? And he tried, and he says, I told him I'm not leaving. This lady needs medical attention. She suffers from high blood pressure. Finally, he says, if you give me an undertaking as a female that you will escort her along with a male police officer, he says, the humanity in me will allow me to do that. He says, because I really understand, he says, but I'm constrained. And so I had to then go to the hospital late Friday night and spend a couple hours there so that my client could get attention. She